Hello again and welcome back to another video about how to make perfect charcoal first time every time using one of these a charcoal retort. Thanks to everybody who's left comments on the video that I made last year about using one of these I'm now going to reply to some of those comments um, and try to tell you why I've done things the way I have done and work out a few improvements that we might make. So let's first go to the YouTube comments and see what people have said. Um, firstly, Matthew Donahue um, says that is very nice looking charcoal. How would this system work without the chimney and cover? I've seen some other videos that don't use a cover and seem to achieve similar results. Well Matthew, what I think you're talking about is leaving this bit off. So we've just got the outer barrel with the inner barrel inside like that. Um, the answer is it does work that way. Um, the very first version of this that I built was just like that because I hadn't made the top bit yet and I did use it like that and it was very successful but the chimney basically just gives it a little bit more draw just like the chimney on your house it gives your fire more draw um, so it burns a little bit better and a little bit faster but it will certainly work without it the bonus of not having that chimney on there is you can see what's going on in the top easier um, you will see more air will be able to mix with the wood gases coming out the top of the inner barrel um, so that will ignite easier and you'll be able to see what's going on so there is a lot to be said for not having the chimney on probably equally for not and for having it on it's it's your choice but I put it on purely in the same because it makes lighting it easier and it makes the initial burn a little bit easier right um, Mary Hornbottle says if you pack the space with waste wood and light it at the top it would be less labour um, well you're quite right Mary um, that would be what we call a tea load a top lit up draft um, retort and basically what that means is between the inner drum and the outer drum you pack the space with wood light it at the top and then the idea is that burns down it gets air from little holes around the outside at the bottom and the idea is that it burns down towards where the air is coming from in practice though you do need quite a wide gap between the inner barrel and the outer barrel to do that and I've not got a wide gap with this my gap is only about inch two inches so there's not really enough gap to get enough volume of wood in there to pack it out. Also the problem with that system is the inner barrel tends to sit on the bottom of the outer barrel with, the, with those. It's sometimes called the double barrel method for making charcoal. And you basically light the, charcoal, light the wood in the gap. But when that wood in the gap has burnt down to the bottom there's no easy way of refilling it if you need to put more more fuel in because you need longer to heat the wood that you turn into charcoal that's in the inner barrel so there's no easy way of refilling those um, with this of course because you've got the door in the bottom there you can refill it so you don't just burn wood on this remember you burn garden weeds and waste and any old junk to make the heat which uh, makes the reaction happen to turn the wood into charcoal but you're quite right that is double barrel method but that's not exactly what we're doing here right um, future sailor electronic castaway says it's the best charcoal it's the best charcoal video I've seen uh, love your design and use of old equipment. Recycled stuff is always a winner. Um, well, thanks for that, Future Sailor. The, the reason that I use recycled stuff is it's cheap. I got all this for nothing. I got, I got both the old gas cylinders for nothing, the, the outer one and the inner one. I think the only thing I actually bought was the hinge for the door at the bottom. This... Uh, 
the handle on the door at the bottom, believe it or not, is a lifting eye for my old Land Rover engine. And of course the chimney part here is uh, the cylinder with the ends chopped off of an old fire extinguisher. Um, which brings me on talking of uh, fire extinguishers and things, it brings me on to what Bruce Taylor said. He says, Hi Andy, thanks for your nice essay on how to build a charcoal retort. I like that you use an old gas cylinder and they are very robust and long lasting compared to thin steel of old oil drums. Uh, old firefighting cylinders are even better as they are stainless steel and there are some large ones used for commercial situations. There are a few of the things you could do to improve efficiency of your design. Firstly, rather than cut slots in the bottom of the fire chamber, i.e. the external barrel, you could drill a couple of rows of holes around the sides at the bottom. So what Bruce is saying is rather than have slots inside here in the fire grate, drill holes right down at the bottom of the sides instead. Um, it says a step drill is good for you doing this. It says then the barrel can just be set on the ground and the ashes are contained. Right, the reason I've not done it that way Bruce is because I know there's a lot of people out there that say a fire that is burning wood should admit the air from above it and a fire that is burning coal should admit the, should admit the air from underneath it. But I've done some experiments and I still find it's better. It burns hotter and it burns faster even with wood if you admit the air from underneath which is why I've got what is essentially a fire grate those slots cut in the bottom of the barrel also I didn't really want to retain the ash in the barrel I wanted it to drop out because if you're using clean wood to fire the burn that doesn't make much ash at all but if you're using garden rubbish like weeds and twigs and all kinds of junk out the garden then that does sometimes make a bit more ash so with this system I can rake the ash out from underneath it while it's still burning. So that's why I've done it the way that I have. I've personally found that having the having the air coming from underneath up through a fire grate works better in this situation. I know there are people out there who are going to disagree with me on that, but that's just what I've found through trial and error. Right, you also say Secondly, invert your retort so that the valve hole is at the bottom. Make the top lid just the same except don't drill a hole. You want to force the gases from the feedstock out through the bottom so that your fire will ignite them. This way the gases are providing usable heat for your retort as they burn up the sides of the inner tank. A row of holes at the top of the outer barrel then and at the base of the stack will introduce secondary air to feed the flames and keep the smoke gases burning for a much cleaner burn. If you are not using the thing as a heater it is beneficial to insulate the outer barrel so that you have more heat transferred to the retort. I reckon you could halve the burn time if you did these mods. So once again thanks for your video. Here in Australia gas cylinders only have a 10 year life before regulations stipulate that they must be inspected before being recommissioned. And guess what? The inspection process costs more than a new cylinder, so there are lots of old cylinders going for scrap. It's a considerable waste, but for this kind of thing, a great way to recycle cylinders. Well, thanks Bruce. Um, right, your second point there, that, uh, that you make about inverting the inner barrel, um, is a very good one and it is very valid. Um, what you're saying is my inner barrel at the moment I've got opening at the top and in the top there is a small hole in there which lets the wood gas out and theoretically the gas comes out that little hole and burns off as it comes out. What you're saying is have the lid at the top but have it sealed then have a little hole in the bottom so that as the wood gas is produced it has to go out the bottom where it will ignite in the fire chamber 
where you've got the fire down below and it will add to the fire, add to the flames and it will kind of be a um, almost like a perpetual burn sort of thing. It's a great idea, the reason I haven't done that um, is because I would need to seal the top completely otherwise there would be a path for air to go from the bottom to the top up in the up in the inner barrel and if there was a path for air to go then it might go beyond charcoal the stuff that's in there and it might actually start to burn and I end up with some ash and not as much charcoal so I so to stop that happening I will need to completely seal the top now to seal the top I would have no hole in the middle of there by the way I didn't drill that hole that's the hole where the valve was in the original gas cylinder that I made this top out of um, what I actually did for the inner barrel was I used two gas cylinders one where I cut the end out with a, a smallish hole in it and then another cylinder where I just used a bigger cut out from the end that just slots over the top with an overlap. Now I would need to seal that up completely to have a hole in the bottom for the gas to come out of. And while I could do it, it does complicate the design quite a lot because although this would be sealed, it would also need to be able to lift if the gas pressure inside got too hot almost like a safety valve on a steam engine or, or the valve on an air compressor so it would need to have some kind of spring loaded clips that if uh, if the pressure inside got too much that the sealed top lid could come off and it's a brilliant idea and it's definitely the way to go but I've not done this design quite that advanced yet although that is a modification that I would definitely like to do in the future. So, thanks very much to everybody who's commented. Um, I hope you've uh, had fun watching the videos and I hope you have a go at making one of these uh, charcoal retorts yourselves. And let me know how you get on. Send me a link to your videos and things about it. And send me some photos. If you want to find out more about all this stuff, you can go to our website, which is andyshed.wordpress.com. That's andyshed.wordpress.com, where you'll find out more about the charcoal videos, and you'll find out how to build things like a cargo trike, and all kinds of articles on there, and more getting on there all the time. But remember, if you've enjoyed this, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and uh, we'll see you soon with more videos. But for now, thanks for watching.